The Saints Row franchise has changed a lot over the years as it's grown from its humble beginnings as a Grand Theft Auto clone into a crazy, over-the-top experience that puts many 1980s action movies to shame. Now Volition released the fourth and final chapter of the Third Street Saints, and it promises it will be the biggest and most epic game in the series. Does it live up to that claim? Let's find out. Saints Row 4 takes place five years after the end of Saints Row the Third, where we find that your character has been elected the President of the United States of America. Sadly, for all of those hoping for a West Wing Saints Row style, you've barely stepped into the President's shoes before the White House is attacked by an alien empire known as the Zen. After being captured, your character is thrown into a Matrix-style simulation of the city of Steelport. The story has you rescuing your friends and fighting to take down the Zen both in the simulation and out in the real world. From the very opening cutscene, it is clear that this story is not to be taken too seriously. I mean, come on. You're only 10 minutes into the game and you're already taking part in a battle royale between the President of the USA and the leader of an alien empire. Uh, welcome aboard. I'm gonna hang you over the fireplace, you alien fuck! Now, now, not so fast. The reason why the story works is because it not only knows that it's downright insane, but it revels in it. Smart writing and fun characters make the plot a joy to experience. Saints Row 4 manages to reference and parody everything from Mass Effect to Shakespeare without ever feeling forced or out of place. More than that, it's a love letter to fans of previous games as Saints Row 4 celebrates its past games in some really interesting ways that you need to see for yourself. It is a rare achievement to be able to write a story that feels like a fusion of every science fiction epic ever written, and yet somehow still feels like it has its own identity. Saints Row 4 has one of those stories. Do a barrel roll! Spin the ship, dammit! The game looks very similar to Saints Row the Third in many ways. You spend most of your time in a recycled version of Steelport, and if you've played Saints Row the Third, you will recognize much of the city. This is perhaps the biggest weakness in the game. It's hard to feel like you're exploring when everything is a copy of a Steelport from the third game. There are new additions to the city that do change things up a bit, but it's hard not to be disappointed when you can find the exact same airplane in the exact same spot with the exact same name it had in the last game. The graphics are also largely unchanged from Saints Row the Third, though that's not necessarily bad. I did not experience any real texture or graphical problems during my playthrough, and the game looks great. The soundtrack is another strong point. In addition to the many songs on the radio stations, the game has some great background music that kicks in at the right moments to make intense battles even more epic. Customization makes a return, increasing the choices you have when it comes to decking out your character and gear. Whether you're customizing your car or your looks, the options are impressive. I could never say. We say America is a country of opportunity, a country where we are free to pursue our. We say America is a country of opportunity, a country where we are free to pursue our ambitions and follow our. How many games let you run around the city as Captain Planet, punishing polluters, evildoers, and? anyone else who happens to be standing there. One last point to make is how the world does not really have day or night cycles until after you beat the game. It does tend to get a little bland, always being stuck in a strange mix of nighttime and sunset. While the game does eventually give you the ability to choose from among 12 environments ranging from day to night to even black and white, you cannot do this until after you have beaten the main game. Saints Row 4 uses the exact same engine as Saints Row the Third. Driving vehicles, gunplay, and even menus have received only minor improvements. Even if the mechanics have not changed, however, the game introduces some really cool weapons that are as fun as they are weird. Ever kill a man with dubstep? I have. Oh man, I gotta trade this in. Better you than me. Yeah. 
Still, it's clear that much of the developers' efforts went into the game's new superpowers, and this is where the gameplay truly shines. All of the game's powers are fun in their own way and vary greatly from each other. This does not feel like a cheap gimmick, but honestly changes how you experience the entire game. Yes, you're running around the same city as before, but how you interact with the environment is a completely new experience that never really gets old. I know a lot of people will complain that the superpowers make things like cars obsolete. While, in truth, I did not drive very often, it was only because I chose not to. 90% of the game can be completed without the use of superpowers. With very few exceptions, you can ignore your powers completely and play the game like a mere mortal. Well, a mere mortal with a lot of guns. Upgrades make their triumphant return, allowing you to upgrade your abilities, guns, and even your superpowers. While it's nothing revolutionary, it serves its purpose and gives you a sense of progression. In addition, since many upgrades are only received by completing certain side quests, it encourages you to deviate from the main path and try many other aspects of the game. Collectibles are another big aspect of the game that superpowers enhance. I cannot begin to tell you how many hours I have spent jumping from rooftop to rooftop collecting shiny blue lights. It is so addicting that I expect to see a 10-step program developed for it soon. The crowning achievement of the gameplay, however, is the sheer variety. Between walking around as a robot in the real world... It's power armor. Same thing. Not really. A robot is an automaton, whereas power Don't armor... Ruin this game. To sneaking around in a box like Solid Snake, I cannot think of another game I have ever played that offered so many different ways to play each new mission. It should also be pointed out that during my playthrough of the PC version, my game crashed twice and there were a few game-breaking bugs where I had to reload. Thankfully, the checkpoint system ensures that I never had to replay long segments of the game. When does something stop being a DLC and start being a sequel? It is true that with the recycled map and game engine, the early part of this game could feel like a DLC for Saints Row the Third. But as you play through the game, you start to realize how mistaken that view is. After finishing the main story, I realized that Saints Row 4 is a very different experience than previous games. When it comes down to it, labels are meaningless. What matters is how much fun you had and if it was worth the money. I've spent close to 30 hours on this game and I have no plans on stopping anytime soon. But while I think its issues keep it from getting a perfect score, I cannot stress enough how much fun I had playing this game. Saints Row 4 may not be a defining moment in gaming history, and it may not be talked about for years to come, but it is certainly a game that I will be playing for years to come. Saints Row 4 gets a 4 out of 5. Best superhero ever. So close! Woohoo! Well, that's my review for Saints Row 4. If you have any questions, comments, or different viewpoints, feel free to leave them below. Also, we here at TGN would love to know what's your favorite moment from one of the Saints Row games. If you want a more in-depth look at Saints Row 4, you can check out the full Let's Play of Captain Planet in Steelport over at my channel on Spiffy Squee. And be sure to stay tuned in to TGN Central for more reviews of the games you love. Well, until next time, I'm Squee913, and I'll see you guys later.